Hello and welcome back to the FM20 Leeds United today. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode where we have the Champions League draw. We're finally back in the Champions League Leeds United, which is very exciting. And of course, we'll play a couple of those games later on. First things first, uh, likes target. I'm going to try and say 200 likes on today's video. That would be massively appreciated as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Trying to get to 17,000 before FM21 comes out and then we'll set some new targets after that. And whilst you're down there liking and subscribing there is a link down in the description to two game where i'm partnered with to bring you the cheapest possible version of football manager 21 uh, use code tom fm at the checkout for an extra 10 percent off and then you get instant delivery of the game you get a steam key or an epic key whatever one you want to use basically uh you get access to the beta as well so it's all good you get the game it looks really really good i'm very excited for it so i hope you guys are as well First things first, before we do the draw, I just want to quickly take you through the two games we've played since you were last here for the Inter Milan loss in the Europa Super League, or Super Cup, whatever it's called. Uh, we beat West Brom 2-1, Valenzuela and Carlos Alenia in the goals there. And then we also beat the Blackburn 3-0 with Baby picking up a hat-trick. Potentially more exciting than that if I move my head away. Uh, Thaddeus Davis, I know I said I was going to promote quite a few young players uh, this season, try and give them some first team uh, debuts. Thaddeus Davis got his first team debut and played very well, got an assist and a 7.2 average rating, so congratulations. But moving on to the most exciting thing, the Champions League group stage draw, and because we won the Europa League last season, we are a first seeded team for this, which is very, very nice, I must say. So uh, first seed alongside all these other great clubs. Uh, so Leeds were in Group A, amazing. So straight off the bat, we are in Group A. Now, what team would we like in our group with us? Well, we can't have Chelsea or Man United because they're English, but there's a lot of big teams there. I'd quite like a Bayer Leverkusen or a Sevilla or a Monaco. We can beat them. We've obviously lost to Bruce Dortmund in the past, and then Atletico and Real Madrid are just probably on another level to us. So hopefully we get a Sevilla, Monaco or Bayer Leverkusen. We get... Atletico Madrid. Okay, that'll be tough. That'll be tough, but not impossible. Because obviously they've not won the La Liga. That's why they're not a first of the team. So Barcelona are better. God, Atletico Madrid, though, are still going to be really, really good. In terms of third seeded sides, I don't really mind too much. I'm pretty confident we could beat any of these, apart from maybe AC Milan, because obviously they got to the Champions League final last season, lost narrowly to Inter Milan, and Inter Milan went on to beat us in the European Super Cup. So maybe not AC Milan, but any one of these other teams I'd be happy with. We get Lokomotiv Moscow. Okay, happy with that. I think we can beat them. I think that's a, a very realistic result and win for us. And then in terms of fourth seeded sides, again, don't mind too much who we get actually looking at that. In fact, I don't mind at all. So who are we going to get? Olympiakos from Greece. That's that's fine by me. I think, I genuinely think we've got enough about us to finish first or second in our group there. Atletico Madrid will either come first and we'll come second or other way around. I don't think Lokomotiv Moscow or Olympiakos will cause us too much trouble but you never know until those games happen. So the games are fairly spread out uh, by looks of things. Uh, Atletico Madrid, Lokomotiv Moscow, Olympiakos. I think what I want to do is probably do... I might do Leicester and Atletico Madrid, and then next episode we come back for Norwich and Lokomotiv Moscow. I mean, Olympiakos should be the routine win there. Olympiakos, uh, Lokomotiv Moscow might cause a little bit more trouble maybe, but obviously we're trying to get through these seasons as quickly as possible to try and get as many in as before uh, FM21 comes out. Looking at the fixture list then, I think for today's episode, I might do Atletico Madrid and Crystal Palace then. So go forward past those two games, do those ones, and then next episode come back for Norwich and Lokomotiv Moscow. Or even Lokomotiv Moscow and Tottenham actually, to be fair. Whoever's high on the table at the time will do those. So I'll be back very shortly to play uh, Atletico Madrid and Crystal Palace, and hopefully we pick up wins in the meantime and in those games. Apologies for no videos the past two days. I have been inundated with Streamer Showdown Season 8. Uh, preparation mostly. Wednesday I spent about six... Six is a conservative number. Six hours uh, researching players for this streamer showdown that's, that's coming up, obviously, this coming weekend. We had the draft uh, last night as well, which obviously took up a lot of time as well. And then, of course, the actual streamer showdown this weekend. We had £250 million to spend on Bundesliga and La Liga players. And uh, I've got this squad, if I can put my squad on the screen right now, if I can remember to do that. Uh, and we've also been given two legends as well as a bit of a twist at the end. We've got Steven Gerrard and Paolo Maldini, who's obviously one of the best defenders ever to have lived. 
So I won the streamer showdown last month. This month, hopefully, we'll win it again. Obviously, if you want to see that, 6.45 both on Saturday and Sunday over on twitch.tv slash TomFM. I need your support, so that would be massively appreciated. Now, obviously, Atletico Madrid is a big challenge for us today and our first real tough challenge in the Champions League as well. And this is the team that I think should be good enough to take them on. We've got Van Voort in goal with eight Nuri, Gomez, Godfrey and Tommy Esso at the back. Taylor Barkley and Alenia start in that midfield trio today because we do have injuries there to Valenzuela. Thomas also injured as well. So we've been rotating Thaddeus Davis and Thomas Sarov in that midfield as well. Uh, Taylor's just come back from an injury himself to play in this fixture. So good job he's back for this one. Bergwijn and Renia obviously on the wings and Baby who's got four goals to his name so far this season leads the line. Worth pointing out as well we bought him from Atletico Madrid so uh, this is a exciting game for him. So then kickoff is upon us. Now this should be exciting. Hopefully we get the win against Atletico. They do have a good team. They've got Dembele, they've got Morata up front, uh, they've got Saul in there, they had uh, Thomas Lamar as well. So they've got a very good team, Atletico Madrid. Obviously they are one of the favourites for the Champions League this season, you would say, as uh, Tommy Asu on the ball into Renya. Renya gets the first goal of the game though and our first ever goal in the... Champions League as it has been revamped. I think when Leeds last played in it, it might have still been the European Cup, uh, to be fair, which is a long, long time ago now. But this is the first goal we've had in it for a long, long time. Renier gets it. Just a very nice finish there at the near post. Keeper really made a big mistake there. But 1-0 up. You love to see it. Still playing uh, Jan Oblak in goal. Still got Jimenez at the back as well. Luca Dean is playing for them at left back too. Uh, so they've still got Koke playing for them. So still got quite a few players actually play for them in real life. But hopefully that means they are getting on a little bit. And it means that they're not quite as good as they were at their heyday. So maybe we can take advantage of that. And we are doing it right now. Three shots to one shot. It's not huge command of the game but it is a command of the game and of course at half time as it ticks down we are one the up which is very impressive thing is i don't think any player on either team are playing particularly well we've got a few players sitting on a seven rating but i think when you one the up that is you know it's kind of standard to have a player on seven rating at least as baby's been brought down and that's a red card it's a red card for atletico madrid i think it's a second yellow for one of their players there but that is something hopefully we can take advantage of let's go a bit more attacking although it's only a group stage game tom all we need to do is just get three points let's not go too mental as long as we get the three points that's all we need to do eleni is going to come off for thaddeus davis who's because oh, eleni's not been playing particularly well baby also in a bit of a poor game uh, so we'll bring bartol barisic on for him we might bring adam holozek on shortly really not a very good game for highlights this one there's been one highlight for the goal uh one for the red card i think that's genuinely it just two highlights in this entire game and now obviously the third one coming right now as bergwijn gets on the ball into taylor out to eight neary eight neary coming forward now can he whip a ball into the middle he can bartol barisic is down it's just been put over the bar unlucky there Bartol but in a game where there's been very few highlights you can guarantee that they'll now score won't they from this corner they haven't we can get on the counter attack come on Renier if we can get a second goal that's the game done and dusted as Morata has now been sent off I think is this another red card for Atletico Madrid Come on, send him off. He has done two yellow cards for Alvaro Morata, two red cards for Atletico Madrid. And hopefully now we can just see this game out. This would be fantastic. And what it does mean, if they're missing two key players for their next group stage game, I'm not sure if they play Olympiakos or Lokomotiv Moscone, because I think it might be Olympiakos. We might have a really good chance of uh, Olympiakos, or have we just got a goal? Bartol's got one. I missed it. I was looking at our table. I was about to say we might have a really good chance of uh, Olympiakos or Lokomotiv Moscow beating Atletico Madrid, which would be a big help for us if we want to finish top of the group. What happened here then? So Renier shot. He kept it in the area uh, and then somehow got it to Bartol, who just slipped it past the keeper again at the near post. 2-0 to us. We are winning this game and this is a superb result. Yes, it has been made easier by the fact that uh, Atletico Madrid are down to nine players, but we were winning this before they went down to nine players. As Ross Barkley now gets in on the score sheet to another goal for us as we go 3-0 up. And can we make it four? I mean, it doesn't really matter too much right now, does it? Because it's a group stage game. All that matters is the three points. It's just another red card. It's a straight red card for Christopher Ayer. I don't think I've ever seen a team have three players sent off in one match. I don't think I've ever experienced that. I don't think I've ever seen the opposition experience that. That is mental. Eight players left on this Atletico Madrid side. What hap How many players do you have to have sent off for the match to be abandoned? Is that a thing? Like, if you have five players sent off, 
surely that would mean that you get the game called off because there's no point. I don't, I don't, this is, I've never had this before. This is a first. Seeing red this uh, Atletico Madrid side. This will make a great thumbnail as well because it looks like I'm going to be really bad or angry as Ray Nick Nuri scores a fantastic goal from distance to make it 4-0. I'll be on the thumbnail doing something like uh, looking angry with it all red filtered out. All right, it's going to be, it's going to be a great thumbnail now this. In fact, I might even just take that clip and just put it on the thumbnail and just paint it red. Either way, though, a massive, massive win there against Atletico. Poor Atletico with four players, a three-player sent off there. Absolutely mental, to be fair. But what a great result for us. And hopefully we can take a lot of confidence from that as we head into our Premier League game against Crystal Palace. And talking of the Premier League, it has made £2 million for that win. That is huge. Talking of the Premier League, we are currently sitting top of the table after five games. But it is still ridiculously close because it's only been five games played. Uh, lose one game, we could drop down to seventh in the table, for example. So. So it really is uh, all up in the air right now. So don't read into this too much. Saying that though, we are the only team to not lose a game this season so far, which is quite an impressive feat. What is the most number of players you've ever had sent off in a game, like from both teams? Because I feel like I've had like two red cards on either team, but never like three players from one side. Oh, Anthony Ward injured. Uh, we'll leave you to the physio, Anthony. But... I do want to start getting you into the first team a little bit more this season. I mean, 13 crossing and 16 dribbling is really, really good. And when Bergwijn's not fit, I think this is the type of player we need to be bringing into the team. So ideally, we don't want to... So ideally, only minimal changes needed for the game against Palace. I think I want to give Reese James a start instead of Tommy Asu. And I want to bring Josko on for Joe Gomez, I think, for this game too. And actually, while I think about it, I think Holozek needs a run out as well on the right wing. But other than that, we won't change anything else. So let's submit the team and go for it. So then, kickoff is upon us. Uh, Carlos Delenia very quickly into this game launches a corner into the middle, which we've not managed to turn into the back of the net. But we do have another chance. Eight Nuri nearly tackled there, but he does retain possession as uh, Kenneth Taylor on the ball out towards Holozek into Baby. Baby down to James. James on the ball back to Holozek. Holozek passed his man, not brought down in the area, but Alenia keeps hold of possession and Baby gets his fifth of the season. This is the fifth Premier League game he's played and his fifth goal in the Premier League. He has been an inspired signing so far. So the ball bounces around the area an awful lot, I must say, in this. But we end up getting it in the middle to Baby. Alenia putting it in there and Baby's like volley. I'm not quite sure what he did with the ball because he looked like he wasn't going to get it on target because players were in the way, but it seems to curve it around the players, but also curve it to the extent that it actually goes in the back of the net. That was pretty impressive. And as long as we win this game as well, we will stay top of the table, which is very good. And exactly what we need this season. We need to be pushing for the title this season. If we came second last season, we've got to capitalize on that. First and foremost, get ourselves back in the top four, but secondly, really try and push to win the league title. And I think we've got a team that is capable of doing that. I really think we do. But we do need to have a lot of luck on our side as well this season for that to happen. Like, obviously, every every title winner has a lot of luck on their side. And obviously, you make your own luck a lot of the time. But we've got to have that luck to make sure we don't slip up against teams like Crystal Palace. I mean, right now, Crystal Palace are technically playing better than us. I mean, they've had three shots to our now three shots. It was two shots. They've had more possession. Uh, they're doing a bit more with the ball, I would say. So... We have, we're lucky right now, maybe, that we're winning this game. But if we can just keep grinding out 1-0s like we did last season, or 2-0s as Ben Godfrey makes it 2-0 from the free kick, Alenia with his second assist of the day, you love to see it. Carlos Alenia on the ball with another free kick, which is collected by Marcus Dewhurst. I thought it was going to be a hat-trick of assists for Alenia there. Instead, Dewhurst on the ball plays it short to Ferguson, who gets it out to Simpson as Palace look to bring the ball forward to try and grab some sort of uh, goal out of this game to try and get themselves back into the game to try and pick up a point or so. But Reese James with a good interception. Ben Godfrey now on the ball, launches one up to Holozek. Holozek cuts inside, comes through to Taylor. Taylor into Barkley, out to Elenia. Elenia this time getting it out to Wilfred Zaha, who's still playing for Palace. That is absolutely mad as well as Elenia has now been sent off, I believe. What a weird game he's had. Two assists, a 7.2 average rating, but now a red card. Weird. What we'll do in the meantime is just move Taylor into his position and uh, sort of go with that. Bergwijn not having the best of games uh, so far. And this ideally would be when we bring uh, Ant Ward off the bench. However, he's injured, so can't be on the bench right now. What we'll do in the meantime is maybe swap Holozek over there, bring Renya on the right-hand side as well. In fact, now we've got Nasty on the bench. Let's give Nasty a run for Bergwijn instead. Let's try that. 
I'm kind of at the end of my tether a little bit with, with Nasty. He's just not developing as quickly as I've... He's now injured as well, so I'm really into my tether with Nasty. Uh, and we'll bring uh, Holozek over and then obviously Renia on for Nasty. But he's just not quite developing, really, at all. Uh, I, I've seen in other saves he becomes a world-class winger. In this one, he's done nothing. So I feel like he's been a bit of a waste of money, if I'm honest with you, as Van Vort makes a really good save there. That, though, should be that as the clock ticks down. Reese James now picks up a tight calf. We are having a couple injury issues at the start of this season. Hopefully the knocks that we've sustained in today's game aren't too bad. What are they like? Nasi, 10 to 12 days. Uh, Josko, 1 to 3 days. Reese James, 1 to 2 days. They're not too bad. It's okay. Elenia banned for one match. And that next match is a cup game against Norwich so that's not too much of an issue I'm happy with that that is that is good that is good results I've got to say uh, next episode we're going to zoom through all of this to go through to Norwich weirdly and uh, no actually we'll do Lokomotiv Moscow and Tottenham because Tottenham will be a better team to play than Norwich I would imagine but this is going to take a long time to play and I've got a very busy weekend with the streamer showdown so don't expect a video tomorrow on Saturday but there will be a video out on Sunday for you. So look forward to that one. So until then, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Of course, come watch the streamer showdown this weekend. That would be massively appreciated over on my Twitch channel. Links down in the description below. And I will see you on Sunday. Have a good one. Goodbye.